Hello and welcome students to the section 9 of the course Social Engineering Attack. Now in this section we are going to take a look at various points. First of all we will learn about how to perform phishing attack. Then we will create a Trojan and then we will perform Trojan attack. We will also use Maltego tool inside Kali Linux operating system and finally we will perform browser exploitation framework inside Kali Linux. So let's start phishing attack using SET. In this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of points. First of all, we will learn about what is SET and then how we can perform phishing attack using SET that we are going to cover here in this video. So now to perform phishing attack, you need to open Kali Linux and Windows 10 operating system inside VMware Workstation. So guys, uh, I'm here at Kali Linux operating system. And first of all, let me show you that what is SET and uh, how we can use it for phishing attack. So if you can click on applications here and inside social engineering tools, you can find here SET is available here, right? So the full form of SET is social engineering toolkit. This is a group of tools which is used to perform social engineering attack on various kind of systems, right? Now uh, you can click it and you can open it inside the terminal of Kali Linux. So it is going to start inside Kali Linux operating system. Here it is. Let me zoom it for you. So by using SET or social engineering toolkit, we can perform phishing attack. Now what is phishing? Phishing is a kind of attack in which attacker creates a duplicate web page of a website and uh, then it creates a link and send it to the victim. When victim clicks on that link, the victim redirects to that fake website and using that fake website, attacker can grab the sensitive information from the victim right now how we can create a kind of phishing page here so uh, first of all you need to select the first option social engineering attacks so you can type here one hit enter so now what you can do here basically right here you can select the second option which is website attack vectors right you can type here two hit enter inside that these are the Options available Java applet attack method, Metasploit browser exploit method, credential harvester attack method. So we are going to select the third one, credential harvester attack methods. Now you can select three, hit enter. Now it is saying that uh, do you want to use web templates or site cloner or custom import? So uh, as we don't need to create a new kind of web pages here, so we can try the first one, web templates, hit enter. So here you need to provide the IP address of uh, Kali Linux, right? So that it can provide you the username and password of uh, these websites right here on the terminal. So how to get IP address? You can click on file, you can open a new terminal. And uh, inside this terminal, you can type ifconfig, hit enter. So this is the IP address 192.168.0.2 working on ETS0 adapter. You can close it and you can type here the IP address 192.168.0.2 hit enter. Now you can see the options are available here for example Java required or you want to create a Google fake page or Facebook fake page or Twitter fake page or Yahoo fake page right. So these options are available here. So I will show you for example we can try on Google as well as Twitter right. So first of all, let me show you on Google that how you can create a Gmail fake page or Google fake page using social engineering toolkit. So you can select option two, hit enter. We are creating a Google fake page here. So now it is cloning the website for us. So you just need to wait here, right? So you can see here the best way to use this attack is if username and password form fields are available regardless the capture all post on a website right. So this will work when the website has a login panel and when victim has to type the username and password then this kind of attack is very useful right. So now uh, the work is complete. It has created that fake page. Now what you need to do here go back to the victim machine right. In the URL area, type the IP address of Kali Linux and hit enter and I hope it will open up the fake page of. So as our victim machine is Windows 10 operating system right here. So I can try on Windows 10 operating system. So I'm here at Windows 10 operating system. 
Now what I can do here, basically I can open any browser inside it. So for example, I can open Internet Explorer inside it. Click and open it inside Windows 10 operating system. So uh, you can start Internet Explorer or Mozilla Firefox, any browser you can start. For example, this is Mozilla Firefox inside Windows 10 operating system. So in the browser 2.168.0.2, so here you can see that this is the fake Gmail page created by the Social Engineering Toolkit. And uh, you can see here that uh, this is the Google page, right? Where the email and the password is available. This victim needs to type email and password here. For example, let me type the email demo at the rate gmail.com and password is 123456, right? Any password. And then after that, if you can see inside Kali Linux, Kali Linux is basically showing you the IP address that uh, someone has opened the web page inside the victim machine, right? And then you can click sign in. So it will run here. Now it is redirected to the google.com. If you go back to Kali Linux, so here you can see that we got the credentials here. So first of all, you can see here that this is the page, right? And if you come down, you can check right here in the red color. Username field found, email is demo at the red gmail.com, and the password field found, password is 123456. So you can see here that we got the email and the password of Gmail account of the victim using social engineering toolkit, right? That's how you gather information about the social network accounts using SET inside Kali Linux operating system. Now let me uh, show you another example, right? So we have performed uh, Gmail or Google and now let me show you the Twitter. So you can type control C or control Z here. Otherwise you can hit enter, right? And here you are on the menu bar. Now again, let me select the third one, which is credential harvester attack, hit enter. Now we need to select the first one web templates. Again, you need to type the IP address 192.168.0.2. Hit enter. We have performed with Google. Now it's time to use Twitter. So you can type here 4. Hit enter. And here it is creating the fake page of twitter.com using social engineering toolkit. So uh, I think it has already done the job now you can go back to the windows operating system right and uh, again in the url area you need to type the ip address of kali linux which is 192.168.0.2 enter and here you can see that this is the fake page of twitter right so when victim will insert the email id or username for example username is sunil password is 123456 right and click sign in right it is redirected to the original page of twitter.com go back to Kali Linux and here we go we got the credentials here you can see the username here Sunil and the password here 12345 so this, here you can see the username and the password of Twitter of victim operating system so we have successfully performed a phishing attack using social engineering toolkit First of all, we have created a fake page of Gmail and then we have created a fake page of Twitter. You can also try with Facebook or Yahoo or any other social network, right? So this is all about phishing attack using social engineering toolkit. So guys, this is all about phishing attack using SET. In the next video, we are going to learn about how to perform Trojan attack using social engineering toolkit. Thank you so much for your time. Hello and welcome to Trojan attack using SET. Now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points. First of all about Trojan attack and then how we can perform penetration using SET tool inside Kali Linux operating system. So to perform Trojan attack first of all you need to open Kali Linux and Windows 10 operating system inside VMware workstation. So guys I am here at Kali Linux operating system and uh, 
Kali Linux is the attacker machine and uh, Windows 10 is the victim machine, right? So we are supposing that. So I will create a Trojan inside Kali Linux operating system using social engineering toolkit. We will send it to Windows 10 operating system and then we will perform penetration inside it. So basically, I'm assuming here that security mechanisms are off inside Windows 10 operating system, right? For example, there should be Windows Defender or antivirus should be off inside Windows 10 operating system, right? We will also perform penetration in that case when uh, antivirus is on as well as Defender is on. But now we are assuming that security mechanisms are off. So you can check here, first of all, the Defender inside Windows system. So you can click here and uh, you can search for windows defender settings inside windows 10 operating system so here inside that you need to type defender and uh, open the settings of windows defender inside windows 10 operating system so uh, you can see here that uh, if you click on the window defender settings you can open up the settings of windows defender inside windows 10 operating system so simply click here and open it inside windows 10 so it is opening inside windows 10 operating system and we need to off the defender of windows operating system and then we will perform this practical so what you can do here here you can click on virus and threat protection click here and open it And inside that, you will see if Defender is on or off. So if it is on, then you can click it. Now you can click on Virus and Threat Protection Settings. And Real Protection is on, so you can click Off. And you can change the settings of Defender inside Windows 10 Operating System. You can click on Yes. And Windows Defender is off here. Right, so let me close everything. Now, we have set up the lab. Now let me go back to the Kali Linux operating system and uh, first of all let me open up the social engineering toolkit inside it. So you can click on applications. Inside applications you can come to the social engineering toolkit which is right here. And inside social engineering toolkit we have social engineering tool here. So you can click here and open it inside the terminal of Kali Linux operating system. So here you can see that this is social engineering toolkit menu. Let me zoom it for you. Right. So this is social engineering toolkit. So as we are performing a Trojan attack inside Windows 10 operating system. So you can select the first option which is social engineering attacks. Hit enter. These all are the options available here in which I'm going to select the number four which is create a payload and listener. Right. And using this option we are going to create a Trojan inside Kali Linux operating system then we will send it to Windows 10. So I'm going to select the number 4 here type 4 hit enter you need to select the type of uh, payload let me type number 2 hit enter now we need to provide the L host L host is your Kali Linux IP address so you can check the Kali Linux IP address you can check here you can open a new terminal and inside new terminal you can type if config here you can type if config and 192.168.0.2 is the ip address so you can type here 192.168.0.2 hit enter enter the port number so you need to specify a port number here for example 5555 or 6666 so i'm specifying a port number 5555 right hit enter now it is generating a payload for us so it will create a payload then we will send this payload to windows 10 operating system and then we will infect it with trojan and then trojan will give a kind of backdoor inside windows 10 operating system so uh, you just need to wait here because uh, it is generating a payload here so when it provides us then i'll show you the next steps so you can see here that uh, the payload has been created and the payload has been exported to the default set directory located under slash root slash dot set slash payload dot exe right so it is inside the root folder inside the hidden folder dot set and inside payload dot exe because the name of the file is payload dot exe right so let me show you where it is so if you can click on places 
and uh, then inside places then you can click on home and open root folder inside Kali Linux operating system so you just need to wait here until it opens the home folder inside Kali Linux so you can see here that this is the root folder or home folder in which you need to find out dot set right dot set is also available here so if you can click here you can tick here show hidden files and it will open up so this is dot set double click here and this is the file payload.exe which has been created by social engineering toolkit now what is next option next option is we need to send this file to windows 10 operating system right so how we can send it basically we can generate a python server inside kali linux and using that python server we can transfer this file inside windows 10 operating system let me show you that how you can do this so right click here click open in terminal and uh, create a python server inside kali linux operating system so let me show you that how you can do this so here you can type python dash small m simple http server right after that hit enter and uh, python server is started inside kali linux you can see here with the port number 8000 now we can access this file or this directory inside windows 10 operating system let me show you that how you can do this so go back to windows 10 operating system right here uh, you can open the browser any browser doesn't matter in the url area you can type the ip address of kali linux which is 192.168.0.2 colon and the port number used by python which is 8000 and hit enter so you can see here that i'm able to access the dot set directory inside kali linux operating system using that python server so now what you need to do here you can simply click and download payload.exe file inside windows 10 operating system so you can click here and download it inside windows 10 operating system it is around 70 kb file click save file and the file is going to download inside windows machine so the file is downloaded right click here click open file location inside windows 10 right meanwhile you can go back to kali linux operating system and uh, let me minimize this so now it is asking that do you want to start the payload and listener now right what is the use of this payload and listener using payload and listener we can receive the request coming from the windows 10 operating system because trojan is installing or running inside windows so it will send the information from windows to kali linux so we should have listener inside kali linux so that we can listen the request coming from windows machine so you can type here yes hit enter and now it is going to create payload and listener automatically for us right we don't need to type a single command here it will automatically create the payload and listener using metasploit inside kali linux right and if you go back to windows machine so this is our file payload 2 right which is around 70 kb file so you just need to wait here until it creates this payload and listener inside kali linux operating system so you can see here now that uh, the handler has been created inside kali linux operating system using metasploit right so what you need to do here you just need to go back to windows operating system double click on that payload and run it inside windows 10 operating system so let me double click on this payload here now let's execute inside windows 10 operating system so what will happen basically it will create the interpreter session inside kali linux operating system this is just a warning message click more info click run anyway and it is running inside windows 10 operating system right now you can go back to kali linux and here you can see that meterpreter session 1 has been opened inside kali linux it means we have successfully performed penetration inside windows 10 from kali linux operating system now to open 
that session you can type here sessions you can click inside you can type here sessions dash small i space number one session hit enter and you are on the midwriter right here you can type sysinfo to get information about the target machine and here you can see that we have successfully hacked or penetrated windows 10 operating system using social engineering toolkit so we have created a trojan and using that trojan we have successfully penetrated it in the next video we are going to learn about that how you can use meltgo tool inside kali linux operating system hello and welcome to the section 10 of the course wireless hacking now in this section we are going to take a look at various points for example first of all we will learn about uh, the wireless adapter you should use then we will learn about how to start the monitor mode inside Kali Linux. Then we will learn that how you can hack WEP wireless network. Then we will learn that how you can create a dictionary. And then finally we will hack WPA kind of wireless. About wireless adapter. So now in this video we are going to take a look at what is wireless adapter and some basic information about it. So now I am going to show you that uh, which wireless adapter you should use right and uh, this information is just for education purpose and uh, here I am not promoting any brand of adapters right. So let me show you that which adapter you should use for wireless attack. So I am here at google.com and first of all let me show you that which wireless adapter I personally use inside Kali Linux right so what I suggest is basically I use alpha wireless adapter so you can search alpha wireless adapter inside uh, google.com again I'm telling you that this is just for education purpose here I'm not promoting any brand right so this is a kind of uh, wireless adapter I use personally right so you can also search it on any e-commerce website for example you can try on amazon right here you can search for alpha aws306 energy so this wireless adapter i use right you can basically open it in any e-commerce website right here so this is the wireless adapter right and these all are the components inside it so this is the model number alpha aw us 036 nha that i personally use right so i will also suggest you to use this one right otherwise uh it's up to you that which wireless adapter you purchase right i'm just educating you regarding this so if you can check here then uh, basically it is compatible with any kind of windows and Kali linux operating system any kind of uh, basically linux operating system it is provided by alpha network india right and it is considered one of the best wireless adapter in industry right so i will also use uh, this wireless adapter in the next videos where i will show you that how to attack on wireless network and you can see information about uh, the product here right it supports this kind of wireless type and uh, this is the model number the dimensions available here right there are other wireless adapters are also available for example from tp-link and from panda but i think tp-link will not work now right in the kali linux operating system that's why i'm suggesting you to purchase this one you can purchase this product from any e-commerce website right doesn't matter you can try on any kind of e-commerce website in your country right and you can purchase it so uh, we will connect this wireless adapter inside Kali Linux operating system right then it will provide us monitor more inside it and then using that adapter we can perform wireless attack because our internal wireless adapter is not so strong that's why we have to use the external wireless adapter like this one so this is some basic information about uh, the wireless adapter you should use right so this is all about the wireless adapter in the next video i'm going to show you that how you can start monitor mode inside kali linux operating system thank you so much for your time hello and welcome to the start monitor mode so now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points for what is monitor mode and then how we can start monitor mode inside Kali Linux operating system that I'm going to show you inside 
this video. So first of all, I'm going to show you that how you can connect the wireless adapter with Kali Linux operating system and then how we can start the monitor board. So guys, I'm here at Kali Linux operating system inside VMware Workstation and uh, we don't have any adapter inside Kali Linux which can be used for wireless attack, right? Let me show you. If you can open the terminal of Kali Linux, right? Let me zoom in for you. And if you type ifconfig, then you can see here that uh, there is only ETS0 adapter here. We don't have WLAN0 adapter, which is for uh, wireless, right? So as we don't have WLAN0, so we need to connect the wireless adapter inside Kali Linux operating system, right? So that it can generate a new adapter inside it. So, so now I already have an external adapter, right? I have already provided you information in the first video that which external adapter you should choose it's up to you so i have the adapter and now let me show you how you can connect it with kali linux operating system so here i'm connecting the wireless adapter inside my system inside a slot so you can see here that i have connected the wireless adapter inside my kali linux operating system it is asking that where do you like to connect this adapter so i want to connect it first of all inside my host can click OK. So that wireless adapter is connected inside my host. Now how we can connect it inside VMware Workstation Kali Linux? Let me show you. So what you can do here, you can simply click on VM. You can select removable devices and inside that you can see Etheros is available here. So wireless adapter is using Etheros chip inside it. So you can select it and you can click on connect. So it will disconnect it from the host means the main operating system and it will connect it inside vmware workstation so you can click connect click ok so now it is going to connect inside kali linux operating system you just need to wait here so let me show you that if it is connected or not so if you click here and you can see here that it is connected with my home router right and you can see that wireless adapters are showing me right here you can see the select click on select network and you can see here that all the wireless network around me is showing right here it means the wireless adapter has successfully connected inside kali linux operating system now you can also check with if config so if you can open your terminal inside that terminal you can type if config hit enter and here you can see that uh, there were only two adapters there but now we have another adapter wlan0 and this adapter is created by that external wireless right now uh, adapter is successfully connected now let's talk about the monitor board so first of all let me clear the terminal and inside the terminal you can type iwconfig to get information about wireless adapter so this is the new adapter wlan0 but you can see here that this is in managed mode and uh, this is the name of my home router this is uh, basically the wireless type mode is managed it means it is not able to capture the packets for wireless attack right so we need to convert this mode from managed to monitor so that it can capture those packets right how we can convert it there is a tool available inside it airmon-ng so using airmon-ng we can convert this managed mode into monitor mode. Let me show you that how you can do this. So in the terminal, you can type airmon-ng space dash h, take the help. So this is the command airmon-ng space start space the interface. So this is the interface. We need to start it. So you can type here airmon-ng space start space the name of adapter which is WLAN 0. So WLAN 0 is the adapter name. Hit enter. And you can see here that it has started the monitor mode here. So monitor mode is enabled here and it has started that adapter. So now again you can type. Let me clear first of all that terminal. And again you can type iwconfig. And now you can see here that we have the adapter WLAN 0 mon. And now mode is converted from managed to monitor. That was the need and we have successfully converted managed into monitor mode using airmon-ng so that's how you can 
connect a wireless adapter inside Kali Linux and that's how you can convert the managed mode into monitor mode for wireless capturing. In the next video, I'm going to show you that how you can attack on WEP using Fern tool. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the hack WEP using Fern tool. Now in this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of points. First of all, about Fern Wi-Fi Cracker tool and then how we can use Fern to attack on WEP that we are going to cover here in this video. So open Kali Linux operating system and uh, there I'm going to show you about Fern tool. So guys, I'm here at Kali Linux operating system and uh, we are going to talk about Fern Wi-Fi Cracker tool inside Kali Linux. This is one of the most powerful tool available in Kali Linux for performing wireless attack and the most easiest tool to use because this is a GUI tool, not command line tool. So that's why it is it's more easy than other tools to perform wireless attacks. Let me show you where it is. So if you click on applications, if you select wireless attacks, then you can find Fern Wi-Fi Cracker right here. So click here and open it inside Kali Linux. This is a graphical user interface tool as I already told you, right? Click no. So this is Fern Wi-Fi Cracker, right? And uh, that's how you can open it. One more option is available to open it. Let me close it. Let me open it via terminal. So I'm giving you another option to open Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. So on the terminal, you can type here Fern dash Wi-Fi dash Cracker. Hit enter and it will open up inside Kali Linux. So here it is. So this is another option to open Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. Don't close this window. You can minimize it. And here it is. So this is Fern. One of the most easy and powerful tool in Kali Linux and I personally use Fern every time whenever I need to perform wireless attack. As you already know that we have a wireless adapter connected inside Kali Linux right and the monitor mode is already enabled. So now let me explain you about Fern. So first of all it is asking you that select the interface right select an interface card. So if you don't have wireless adapter, then you won't get any interface here. But if you have connected the wireless adapter here, then if you click here, then you can see the interface is available here. Click here and select the interface, which is WLAN 0, right? You can see here that monitor mode enabled on WLAN 0 mod 0. We have already enabled it, right? Now this option is the second one. It, are, it will provide you information about the wireless scanning so when you click on this button it will scan the wireless around you in your environment and it will provide you details that how many wireless are WEP and how many are WPA right let me show you so if you click here then it is initializing and it will count that WEP right here and WPA right here so generally you know that nowadays WEP is not uh, using by anyone all are using WPA even in mobile phones when you create hotspot it also uses WPA so you won't get any WEP by chance you can get uh, one or two WEP but you won't find more nowadays so you can see here that WEP is not available not detected but WPA is 19 detected right so that here it counts the number of WEP and WPA Next is key database. So when you attacked on a Wi-Fi, you got the password of Wi-Fi. So you will get it inside key database button. And this is about toolbox. We are not working with toolbox here. So now how to attack on WEP kind of network if you have, because now you can see that I don't have any WEP network around me, but by chance if you have, how you can attack it? That's pretty simple, right? Basically, what will happen when, for example, if there is one WEP Wi-Fi available, so this button will enable automatically like this, right? And let me show you inside WPA properly. So if you click on WPA, so this will open up like this. Suppose this is WEP, right? So you just need to do, you need to select the wireless name. For example, I want to attack on the Ajay wireless, right? For example, this is WEP, right? So you just need to select Ajay, right? And you just need to click on Wi-Fi attack. That's it. 
this is the process to attack on WEP because WEP is the weakest kind of wireless protocol, right? And uh, the easiest way to attack on WEP is phone Wi Fi cracker. You just need to select the name of that Wi Fi and simply click on Wi Fi attack, and it will provide you the password in 5 to 10 minutes. Depends on the wireless adapter, right? So when you got the result then you can click on key database and you will get the password like this right this is access point mac address encryption basically this is wpa but wep is there you will get wep here and you will get the key here like this so this is the way how you can attack on wep but i have already told you that uh, you won't get wep nowadays because uh, all are using wpa it is updated to the wpa version but still, if uh, there is any case, then you can use Fern Wi Fi Cracker. Now, Fern Wi Fi Cracker is not only for WEP, it is also for WPA. Right? So, either it is WEP or WPA, it can simply attack on that and uh, it will provide you the password. So, we have talked about WEP. What is the full form of WEP? Wired Equivalent Privacy. So, we have talked about WEP inside this video and how we can attack on WPA that I'm going to show you in the next videos, right? So, this is the basic information about uh, on Wi Fi cracker, right? Let me show you another tool which can be used for information gathering. So, let me close it and uh, let me open the terminal inside Kali Linux. There is another tool which is very useful in information gathering Wi Fi. So, Wi Fi is a tool. You can type here Wi Fi and hit enter. It will provide you information about uh, the wireless adapter nearby and uh, will give you more detail. This is for information gathering about wireless. To attack on WEP, you can go to the phone. So, you can see here that these all are the names of wireless, right? These are the channels which are wireless working on. These are the encryption techniques. You can see here. There is no WEP, all are using WPA nowadays. This is the power, right? This is WPS wired wireless protected system they are using or not. So among them, two are using, and uh, not all of them. And these are the clients. So if you want to get more information about wireless properly, so you can go to Wi Fi command and you can get more information about the wireless around you. So these two tools are really important in Kali Linux, Fern Wi-Fi Cracker and uh, the Wi-Fi and you can also use Wi-Fi for attacking WEP or WPA, right? Alright, so this is all about uh, the Fern Wi-Fi Cracker which you can use to attack on WEB kind of wireless network. So in the next video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a dictionary inside Kali Linux operating system. Thank you. Hello and welcome to end-to-end -end penetration testing with Kali Linux course. My name is Sunil Gupta. I am a cyber security specialist, a book author and a public speaker. And I will be your instructor for this course. Let's talk about the course overview. So what we are going to learn here in this course. First of all, we will provide you information about the course. Then we will learn how to set up a lab for it. Then we will learn the various terminal commands inside Kali Linux operating system. We will learn the tools regarding information gathering in Kali Linux. We will also learn how to perform vulnerability analysis. We will learn database hacking. Then we will learn how to crack passwords using Kali Linux. Man in the middle attack or sniffing. Social engineering attack. Then wireless hacking or Wi Fi attack. Exploitation techniques. Then post exploitation technique. And finally, we will end up this course with reporting. If you talk about the course goals, then you can see in the first point that the course is designed to provide very basic or fundamental skills to analyze the networks, website and applications. And students will learn that how to find out various weakness or vulnerabilities in systems and how you can successfully penetrate using Kali Linux tools. Let's talk about the setup. So, attacker has Kali Linux operating system and he's trying to attack on network, website and application using Kali Linux tools. So we will show you how to use the major tools available in Kali Linux for pen testing. Why you should take this course? You should take this course because 
In this course, we are going to perform vulnerability scanning using various tools in Kali Linux operating system. After vulnerability scanning, we will perform penetration testing. So, after the completion of this course, you will be able to use all the major tools available inside Kali Linux. That's why you should enroll inside this course. So, this is all about the course overview. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you inside the course. Hello and welcome guys to the section 1 of the course. In this section, we are going to take a look at various points. First of all, we will learn about the overview of course. Then we will take a look at the teaser and finally we will learn about the basics of Kali Linux operating system. So let's start with the first video of section 1, how to get most out of this course. In this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of points. First of all, we will learn about course information or introduction and then I will also tell you how you can proceed inside this course. So if I talk about the course info, then we are focusing on only two major points. First is vulnerability analysis, second is penetration testing. Vulnerability analysis means how to find out loopholes inside any system. It can be website, it can be a network, it can be any application, right? And then how to use that vulnerability to penetrate or exploit any system using Kali Linux tools, right? So these are our two major areas, vulnerability analysis and penetration testing with Kali Linux. Now if I give you some guidance here, so it's good if you create short notes so when you are watching the videos so at the same time you can create short notes because there is a lot of information inside these videos that you will not be able to remember it so that's why I create short notes perform practicals on virtual machines when you are performing practicals try to perform major practicals on virtual machines right because it is a possibility that these practicals can harm your main operating system and if there are important documents are inside your main operating system so that's why i recommend you to use practicals inside virtual machines practice tools and remember their work tool practicing is very important so the tool i'm going to show you inside this course you need to practice it again and again to be a master inside it right so that you can remember how they work inside kali linux operating system and how to use them for vulnerability analysis and penetration testing so this is all about some information about course in the next video, we are going to take a look at teaser, hack updated Windows 10 using Kali Linux operating system. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the second video of section 1, teaser, hack updated Windows 10 using Kali Linux. So now in this video, we are going to take a look at the teaser and then I will also explain you that what we are going to do inside this video. So this is just for information that this is just a teaser video, right? We will perform this practical later in the course. So you don't need to worry about anything. So you just need to sit back, relax and just enjoy this video. So guys, I am here at Kali Linux operating system and uh, you can see Windows 10 is also open here, right? So what we are going to do here, I am going to create a payload inside Kali Linux. I will send it to Windows 10 operating system. Windows Defender will be on. And Windows Defender will not be able to detect that it is harmful for Windows machine, right? And then we will get a Metropeter session inside Kali Linux. So, first of all, basically our Defender is off. You need to turn on the Defender of Windows 10 operating system, right? So, on Windows, you can click on the Windows option. You can search your Defender settings. Click here and it will open up like this. So now inside that, uh, you need to click on virus and threat protection, right? And you need to turn on the defender settings. So click on virus and threat protection settings and it should be on, right? So click on and uh, you need to click yes. So now Windows Defender is on inside Windows 10 machine. There is no antivirus in the machine, but Windows Defender is there, right? This is the setup. So Windows Defender is now working inside Windows 10 operating system and now it's time to go back to the Kali Linux operating system and let's create a virus or a payload so that it can bypass the Windows 10 Defender, right? So we already have installed that framework inside Kali Linux. The name of the framework is Zirika 2 and using Zirika 2 we can bypass the Defender of Windows 10 operating system, right? So how we can create a payload, let me show you inside the terminal. So first of all, 
open in terminal inside Kali Linux and inside the terminal first of all we need to open Zirika 2 framework right so here is the terminal right so Zirika 2 is inside our downloads folder so first of all let me go to the downloads folder change the directory cd space downloads right hit enter you can type ls here to list all the frameworks here in which I am going to use Zirika 2 dash master right here so you need to go inside Zirika 2 dash master folder so you can type cd space and copy it right click and paste here Zirika 2 dash master hit enter type ls to list all the files inside it so these are all are the files we need to use this one right so first of all let me type chmod plus x provide a permission execute permission to zirika 2sh right hit enter and now you can run it by typing dot slash zirika 2sh and hit enter so now it will start inside the terminal here checking all the dependencies inside Kali Linux operating system as all the dependencies are already there our system is already updated so there is no need of any update for Zirika 2 and it has successfully provided us the menu here now which one we should use there are seven options here so as we are trying to bypass windows 10 defender right which is the latest operating system from microsoft how we can bypass the defender right we cannot send any simple payload and we can bypass defender that's not possible we need to do something else we need to encode our payload right we need to make shells around the payload so i'm going to use number seven option here multi encode payload in which we are going to encode payload multiple times so that windows defender cannot detect what is inside this shell right so we are going to use the option number seven here so i will type number seven select a payload number seven number hit enter how many times you want to iteration so how many times you want to iterate it i want to try for example i will try 45 times right hit enter l host you need to provide the local host ip address which is your kali linux ip address so you can click open terminal and here you can type if config to check the kali linux ip address so this is the kali linux ip address 192.168.0.2 close it type here 192.168.0.2 hit enter now you need to provide the port number so for example i am typing the port number 5555 hit enter now it is asking that do you want to change the payload icon yes so that windows defender cannot detect it hit enter display an error message no hit enter and you need to provide the file name here right that for example the virus file name or the payload file name you can type any file name right for example i am typing the file is w1 right and hit enter and now it is creating that virus or payload inside Kali Linux operating system and then we will send it to Windows 10 and let's see if Windows Defender detects it or not so you just need to wait here and uh, until it creates that payload so now you can see here guys that the payload is generated here right you can see here that it is successfully generated and uh, this is the payload file where it is saved so it is saved inside the downloads folder inside zirika 2 dash master and inside output folder with name w1.exe and this is the size of payload right this is the value we have set ip address l port right and basically iterations etc so we need to check it that where it is and then we will send it to the windows 10 operating system right so let me minimize it and let me click on places open the downloads folder inside kali linux operating system and let's find out the file inside zirika 2 dash master folder right so here it is we are inside the downloads folder so this is zirika 2 dash master folder double click here and inside zirika 2 dash master you can find output folder so double click on output so this is the file here inside output folder which is w1.exe which we have created using zirika 2 dash master framework 
now what we need to do here basically we need to send this payload to windows 10 operating system right but how we can send it we use the same method by using python server we can send this file to windows 10 operating system so let's create a python server here so do one thing right click here click open in terminal right and here you can type ls to list all the files here right so w1.exe file is available here right we need to send it to windows so type here python dash small m and then simple http server right so python space dash small m space simple http server and hit enter and now python will start on port number 8000 here you can see that python is started on port number 8000 right now to access that file inside windows 10 operating system you can open windows operating system right so inside windows operating system right first of all you need to open the browser so you can open any browser for example you can click on internet explorer or mozilla firefox or you have any other chrome or safari you can open here right so inside the browser what you need to do you need to type the ip address of kali linux and after that colon the port number used by python which is 8000 so the ip address of the kali linux is 192.168.0.2 colon port number is 8000 right so this is the ip address colon port number hit enter and it is going to access the directory of Kali Linux right here. So you can see here that w1.exe file is available here, right? And first of all, you can download it inside Windows 10 operating system. And let's see if Windows Defender is able to detect it or not. So you can click here, download it, click save file, right? It is going to download. Here it is. Click open folder, right? And here it is so this is w1 file available inside windows 10 operating system right and so you can see here that windows defender is open but windows defender is not able to detect it inside windows 10 operating system right so now what we can do here we can go back to the kali linux operating system and inside kali linux you can close this python server because we have already transferred this file to windows 10 operating system right you can close it and you can open the terminal where the payload was generated right now it is asking that do you want to start the payload handler or not yes we want to start the payload handler so you can type y and hit enter and now it will start the handler inside kali linux operating system so you just need to wait here until it starts the handler inside kali linux operating system so now you can see here that the handler has been created inside the kali linux operating system right so what you need to do here you just need to go back to the windows operating system double click on this w1 file execute it and let's see if we get the metaprotor session or not so you can double click here on this file right so now the file w1 is executing inside windows 10 operating system click more info click run anyway and it is running inside windows 10 operating system now go back to the kali linux operating system now you can see guys that we got the mid repeater session open inside Kali Linux operating system. It means we have successfully bypassed Windows Defender inside Windows 10 machine and we got the mid repeater session. It means we have successfully penetrated Windows 10 operating system using Zerika 2 framework. In the next video, we are going to learn about the basics of Kali Linux operating system. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the video of section 1. Kali Linux basics. Now in this video we are going to take a look at a couple of points that uh, what are the basics of Kali Linux and we will also talk about some basic commands. So now let me show you some basic commands inside Kali Linux operating system. So guys I am here at Kali Linux operating system and I am just here to show you some basics right. We still have not installed Kali Linux inside our system but you can learn the basics of Kali Linux before installation, right? So you can see this is the terminal on, on the left hand side, right? So you can click it and you can open it. Let me show you some basic commands which can be useful. So what you can do here, first of all, you can check that which is your current working directory, right? So you can type here pwd 
hit enter so you can see here that yeah, the parent directory is root directory right and basically you can change it to the other directory for example if you type ls so you can list all the files and directories available inside root right for example if you want to go on desktop right so you can type here cd space desktop cd means change directory and you are going to this desktop directory and hit enter so you are in the desktop right so that's how it works inside Kali Linux that if you want to go inside another directory then you can simply type cd space the directory name and you can go back to that particular directory right if you can type pwd then you can see here then that now you are inside slash root slash desktop now you can also make a folder inside it right so if you want to make a folder inside desktop so you can type here mkdir space for example a is the folder name hit enter so if you can minimize it so you can see here that a folder has been created inside desktop similarly you can create multiple folders you can type here mkdir space b space c space d hit enter and if you can minimize then you can see here that these four folders has been created on the desktop of Kali Linux right so that can be done using mkdir right if you want to create a directory or folder then you can use mkdir if you want to remove it then you can type rmdir space a space b space c space d all four of them will be removed hit enter and if you can minimize it then you can check here that there is no directory or folder available inside my desktop right so these are the very basic commands inside Kali Linux uh, which is generally used right now let me close it so now if I talk about the graphical user interface of Kali Linux then you can click on places this is the home folder right or you can say the root folder you can click here and you will see all the information available here right all the basically directories all the files available here right this is your desktop these are this is the document these are the downloads right so when you will download from internet so the file will be downloaded inside this folder right now this is applications in applications you will find out various tools basically they are pre-installed to inside Kali Linux operating system you don't need to download and install it right these all are already available inside it you just need to select the tool and click it and it will open up like this right and then you can use it accordingly got it so that's how it works and if you want to check the IP address of Kali Linux then it's pretty easy you can type ifconfig enter and then you can see the IP address of your Kali Linux operating system so this is the adapter it's 0 or it is 0 and the IP address of Kali Linux is 192.168.0.8 so that's how you can check IP address of Kali Linux operating system if you want to ping any other machine then you can type ping space the IP address of that particular machine for example if I want to ping my main operating system the IP address of my main operating system is this hit enter and here you can see that it is replying the packets are coming it means the target system is live if you want to stop this process you can type control C and it will stop right so in Kali Linux you can type ifconfig to check the IP address in Windows on command prompt you can type ipconfig to check the IP address of Windows operating system you can check ping right you can also try trace route for example let me clear it so trace route provides information about number of hopes between you means your system and the target system for example this is Kali Linux operating system and if I want to check the hope between Kali Linux and my main operating system which is Windows so you can gather information about it you can type here trace route space the IP address or website name for example this is my Windows IP address hit enter so you can see here that uh, there is only one hope available because we are already in the same system so that's why there is no hope between me right but for example if I try to trace root let me show you for example if I want to trace root 192.168.0.1 right so still you can see 
I am able to trace out my gateway, right? And there is no hope between me because gateway is also inside my network, right? Or I can say that my system is inside the network. So if you want to trace out the machine which is outside your network, then it will provide you the number of hopes more than one, right? So for example, if you are in India and you are trying to trace out any IP address in USA, so it will provide you the complete path that how your packets are traveling from your country to other country using trace route. So these are some basic commands inside Kali Linux operating system that we will use in the later videos as well, right? So this is all about the Kali Linux basics. If I talk about the section summary, then first of all, we have learned about the introduction about the course and we have also seen a teaser here. And finally, we have learned about the basics of Kali Linux operating system. In the next section, we are going to learn about lab setup where we will install Windows and Kali Linux inside VMware Workstation. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the section 2 of the course, Lab Setup. Now in this section, we are going to take a look at various points. First of all, we will learn about that how you can install virtual machine inside your operating system. Then we will learn how you can download Windows and Kali Linux and then installation of the Windows and Kali Linux operating system and then finally updation of Kali Linux. So let's start with the first video of section 2 download and install VMware workstation. Now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points how to download VMware workstation and then installation procedure of it. So now you need to open google.com inside your main operating system and then I'm going to show you that how you can download VMware workstation inside your system. So you can see here that I've started google.com inside my main operating system. I'm using Windows 10 machine as my main OS. So I'm going to download VMware workstation for Windows operating system. VMware is also available for Linux and other operating systems. Similarly, you can also download VirtualBox inside your system, right? So let me type download VMware for Windows and hit enter. So this is the official website of VMware Workstation where you can download VMware versions. Click here. So this is VMware Workstation 15 Pro, right? This is the latest version and you can download the trial version of VMware Workstation for 30 days, right? So what you can do here, basically this is Workstation 15 Pro for Windows, this is Workstation 15 Pro for Linux and it is also available for Mac that you need to search from Google. So as I'm using Windows 10 machine, so I'm going to download this version. If you are using Linux machine as main operating system, then you can download this one. So let me click download now. So this is around 512 MB file, right? You can download it inside your system and then you will install it inside our main operating system. So you can click save file. Now it is going to download inside my system. So you just need to wait here until the download completes. So guys, I have already downloaded VMware Workstation inside my operating system. So this is the installer which I have downloaded from the official website, right? What you need to do, you need to just double click here and install it inside your system. So double click it. Provide you the installation wizard. Here it is. So this is VMware Workstation 15 Pro and we are going to download the trial version of it which you can use for next 30 days but if you want to use it for permanent then you can purchase the VMware workstation right now it is going to show me the installation wizard of VMware workstation here it is so this is VMware workstation pro setup wizard now you can click next accept the license agreement here then you can hit next click next if you want to join their program then you can tick them otherwise you can untick both of them we don't need any product update or we don't want to join VMware customer experience improvement program. Click next. So if you want to create a shortcut on your desktop, so tick here, hit next and click install. Now the installation of VMware workstation has started inside my main operating system, right? So you can see here that it is setting the files, folders inside my system. It is going to download some media here copying the new files 
so you just need to wait here until the installation completes so now you can see guys that the installation of vmware workstation is completed so if you have a license if you have purchased vmware workstation then you can click license and then you can use the licensed version if you don't have license then you can use vmware workstation for next 30 days as a trial version so you can click finish so the installation is complete inside windows 10 operating system now let me show you that how you can open it so inside windows you can search for vmware workstation right click here vm workstation pro and then it will open up inside your system here it is right so this is vmware workstation right that this is the graphical user interface so you can click file you can click new virtual machine but that we will do later so you can see in the left hand side you can see some machines are available here because i have already installed some machine inside it but if you have installed vmware version for the first time in your system you won't get this in the left hand side right and you can work on vmware workstation for next 30 days as i have already installed vmware version that's why it is showing me just 11 days here right so these all are the menu available right you can close it how you can create a new virtual machine right so these all are options are available here so this is all about the installation of vmware workstation inside my main operating system in the next video i'm going to show you that how you can download windows and kali linux inside vmware workstation thank you so much download windows and kali linux so now in this video we are going to take a look at first of all how to download windows operating system and then how to download kali linux inside your main operating system that we are going to learn here so first of all you need to open google.com inside your main operating system let's download windows 10 operating system inside it so right now i'm here at google and on google you can type download windows 10 iso and hit enter so this is the official website which is microsoft.com from which you can download the windows 10 operating system so click here and open it inside it so we are going to download windows 10 from microsoft website so now we are here at microsoft.com website right so basically there is no direct link to download windows 10 from this website there is a tool available inside this website first of all you need to run that tool inside your main operating system by using that tool you can download windows 10 operating system right so basically you can see here that it is create windows 10 installation media right so to get started you will first need to have a license to install windows 10 that we don't need it you can then download and run the media creation tool right using this tool we can download the iso file of windows so that we can install it in vmware workstation for more information on how to use the tool see the instructions below right these are the instructions using the tool to upgrade the pc yes uh, we want to download the iso file so you can click here you can you can check the complete process here right so let me show you that how you can download this tool and how we can run this tool inside main operating system so click download tool now click here so this star tool is around 18.2 MB file, right? You can click save file. And now it is going to save inside your main operating system, right? So you can check here that before you download the tool, make sure you have an internet connection, sufficient data storage, a blank USB flash drive that we don't need it because we want to download the ISO file. We don't want to burn it inside a pen drive. When burning a DVD from ISO file, you are told the disk image file is too large. So the tool has been downloaded right here. Now, first of all, we need to run it. So click here and run it inside Windows operating system. So first of all, it will process inside your system. And after this processing, it will provide you options that uh, do you want to download iso file or do you want to upgrade your pc these kind of options you will get so you just need to wait here you can see here that it is processing now basically it is showing you the terms and conditions here so you can read them and after that you can click accept and then you just need to wait here 
it will provide you the options that I've already told you that do you want to download the ISO file or do you want to upgrade your system you need to choose the second option that I want to download the ISO file and then you can save it inside your system right so now you can see here that first one is upgrade this PC now we don't want to upgrade it we already using Windows 10 second is create installation media USB flash drive DVD or ISO file right so we need ISO file so that's why choose the second option select the second option here click next now you can select the language here whatever language you want to select what kind of edition it is Windows 10 architecture 32 or 64 select 64 we need 64 bit click next again giving us two options here that it needs to be at least 8 GB file if you want to download in a USB and if you want to download the ISO file so you can download it easily so you can click ISO file here click next so now you can save it inside uh, your main operating system right Windows 10 OS click save and now you can see that now it is progressing inside it so it is now 0% right when it completes or it becomes 100% then you will get the complete ISO file inside your D drive right so you just need to wait here and I'll show you after the completion so now you can see that I have already downloaded Windows 10 ISO file inside my main operating system which is around 3.6 GB file right so obviously if you are downloading from that tool it will take some time depends on your internet speed right so this is Windows 10 operating system and this is ISO file we can easily install and run it inside VMware workstation now let's talk about the Kali Linux operating system that how we can download Kali Linux inside our main operating system so I'm here again at google.com and we are here to download Kali Linux operating system so inside Google you can type download Kali Linux and hit enter right so this is the official website of Kali Linux and it will redirect you to the download page so you can click here and open the Kali Linux downloads page so you can see here that these all are the images of Kali Linux operating system right so there are two options either you download the complete version of Kali Linux right you can do it from here Kali Linux 64 bit you can click on HTTP right and you can download the complete 3 GB file from here right and then you can install it inside VMware workstation this is one option second is you can download the VMware version of Kali Linux because we have installed VMware workstation so we can download the VMware version of Kali Linux here it is so this is Kali Linux 64 bit VMware version this is particularly for VMware right so in that case you don't need to install it it will automatically run in this case you need to install it properly right so it's up to you which one you choose but we need Kali Linux operating system for performing practicals so that's why so for example this one VMware VM click on the downloads page of Kali Linux operating system and if you can come down then there are two options one for VMware image and second for virtual box image right so basically if you have installed virtual box then you can try this one but we have installed VMware versions so I'm going to use this one so you can download this one Kali Linux VM 64 bit 7z right and this is a torrent file so you can click here and basically this is a torrent file so you need to convert into a zip file using mu torrent application right so you can save it and then you need to do it yourself you need to use mu torrent application and then you can use it to convert into zip file let me show you that how it looks like so I have already downloaded that zip file right first of all I already told you download torrent file convert it into the zip file using mu torrent application right and then you can download it so this is the zip file right of Kali Linux so first of all you need to unzip it here you can right click here click extract files and you will get this folder Kali Linux right double click here you will get all these files inside it these all are the files inside that Kali Linux folder right 
so when you want to install it then you can just double click on this file and it will install it inside vmware workstation and then you can run it directly right so these are the processes which can be used to download windows 10 operating system and kali linux operating system inside your main operating system in the next video we are going to learn about the installation of windows and kali linux inside vmware workstation thank you installation of windows and kali linux so now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points first of all i will show you that how to install windows 10 operating system inside vmware workstation and then how you can install kali linux operating system inside vmware so first of all what you need to do you need to open vmware workstation inside your main operating system and then i'm going to show you windows installation so this is a vmware workstation that we have installed in this section before right now we have windows 10 iso inside our main operating system so you can simply create a new virtual machine inside it and basically you just need to follow the instruction and you can easily install windows 10 i'm just showing you the initial process of windows 10 installation so what you can do here you can simply click on file you can click on new virtual machine so this is new virtual machine there are two types of configuration typical and custom recommended is typical so select typical click next so there are three options basically install a disk install a disk image file and i will install the operating system data so as we already have iso file so we can select the second one you can click browse click basically browse where your windows 10 iso is available so click windows 10 operating system and click os and this is my windows 10 iso file click open right and hit next and here you can type the name of that machine right then you can hit next you need to provide here the size of windows operating system so you can provide a 30 gb or 40 gb doesn't matter for example 30 gb click store virtual disk in a single file right hit next customize hardware you can click customize hardware here you can select the network adapter here so you can click on bridge you can also check your memory it should be 2 gb processors 2 gb click close and if you want then you can also change it to 60 gb doesn't matter right if you have space then you can type 60 gb click next we have already set it to bridge network right 2048 mb memory 60 gb hard disk right and click finish now it will create a disk for you and then you just need to follow the instructions like normal windows and then you will be able to install windows 10 operating system inside vmware workstation so this is the initial process of windows 10 installation in vmware workstation so now you can see here guys that we have successfully installed windows 10 operating system right that was the initial process and as i already told you that you just need to follow the instructions and you can easily install windows 10 inside vmware workstation now let me show you that how you can install kali linux operating system inside vmware workstation so guys this is kali linux folder inside d drive right and i already told you in the previous video that if you open it then you can see these all files available inside it right so how you can open this kali linux image for vmware workstation pretty easy you just you don't need to install it right you can simply run it inside vmware workstation so you can see the fourth file which is vmware virtual machine configuration file which is around 4 kb right you just need to double click here and it will automatically open up inside kali linux operating system so you can double click here and you just need to wait here it will open up here it is right so you just need to click on power on click i copied it hit enter so now it is opening inside vmware workstation as i already told you that there is no need of installation here because this is okay, image for vmware workstation right if you have downloaded that normal kind of iso file then you need installation but in this condition you don't need 
because this is particularly for VMware workstation right so basically now it is processing and it will open up inside Kali Linux so it will open up inside VMware and here you can see that we got the graphical user interface of Kali Linux operating system right so to log in here you can use username as root R -O -O -T. click next and you can use the password tool T -O -O -R, right and click sign in so now you will be able to log in inside Kali Linux operating this is by default username and password root and tool inside Kali Linux VMware machines right so after typing the username and password and you will be able to get the graphical user interface of Kali Linux operating system so you just need to wait here so here you can see guys that we have successfully installed Windows 10 and Kali Linux operating system inside VMware workstation let me make it full size so this is Kali Linux operating system and here it is Windows 10 operating system so we have successfully installed both the operating systems inside VMware workstation in the next video we are going to learn that how you can update Kali Linux operating system thank you hello and welcome to the fourth video of section 2 update Kali Linux operating system so now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points first of all how to update and upgrade the Kali Linux operating system and various commands and then I will also explain you about these commands so you can open Kali Linux operating system inside VMware workstation and then I'm going to show you that how you can use these commands inside it so I'm here at Kali Linux operating system and let me show you that how you can perform update and upgrade inside it right so first of all let me show you a file which is available inside Kali Linux and which is responsible for updation and upgradation so first of all you can click on places you click you can click on computer inside computer you can click on etc inside etc you can click apt and inside that you can find sources.list file so if there are wrong entries inside sources.list file your system will not be able to perform updation or upgradation right so we need to check so you can right click here you can click open with other application you can select the leaf pad and click select so this information is available inside it right now uh, let me update it let me add some more information inside it so do one thing open the browser of Kali Linux and on Google you can type Kali Linux source sources dot list and hit enter so you can see here that there are various links available right for example this is the official link you can right click here you can open it and if you can come down you will also get a github link right that you need to check otherwise you can also type here Kali Linux sources dot list github hit enter and here we go so you can also right click here you can also open this one there are various sources dot list file here so first of all let me show you this one Kali sources dot list repositories right so this is a regular repository on a standard clean install of Kali Linux and you should have the following entry present in this sources dot list file this one right in case you require source packages you can also add this one but there are other repositories also available which can be added inside that list right for example this one so this is a complete repository so let me do one thing let me copy the complete repository right click here click copy and you can minimize everything so it contains all the Kali Linux repositories for updation and upgradation and you can open the sources.list file you can select everything right delete and paste here this complete information click file and click save so we have successfully saved inside Kali Linux operating system our work is done right sources.list file is now updated so now what you can do first of all you can update it so you can open the terminal of Kali Linux here on this terminal you can type sudo 
apt get update right sudo means you are taking it as a root user apt get and you are updating the system now hit enter so now it will update your complete kali linux operating system right basically my system is already updated that's why it is not showing in any update here right so this is the command sudo space apt dash get space update and using this command you will be able to run updation inside your system so let me clear it you can also upgrade your system so if you want to upgrade basically my system is already updated and upgraded that's why it is not showing me any update or upgrade you can type here sudo apt get update but you have installed fresh kali linux then you need update and upgrade it so you can type here sudo apt dash get space upgrade and hit enter so you can see here that all the updation is already there inside my system right so i don't need any upgradation but as i already told you that on a fresh kali linux image you can type this command and it will automatically update and upgrade your complete system so you don't need to wait here right meanwhile you can go to the next videos and you can learn more right and let the update and up upgrade finish inside your kali linux operating system so that's how you can set up the source.list file that's how you can update and upgrade your kali linux operating system so if we talk about the section summary so first of all we have learned about the installation of virtual machine then we have downloaded and installed the windows and kali linux operating system inside vmware workstation then finally we have learned that how you can update and upgrade your kali linux operating system so this is all about the section in the next section we are going to learn about various terminal commands thank you hello and welcome to the section 3 of the course terminal commands now in this section we are going to take a look at various points first of all we will learn about the file commands then we will learn about various directory commands then chain commands and finally we will learn that how to manage services inside kali linux operating system so let's start with the first video of section 3 file commands now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points first of all what are the various file commands available inside kali linux operating system then i will also explain you the meaning of these commands so you need to open kali linux operating system inside vmware workstation and then i'm going to show you various file commands so i'm here at kali linux operating system and we are going to learn about the file commands inside it so first of all let me show you that how you can create a file inside kali linux operating system so there are various methods for example you can see here that this is left leaf pad so you can click here and you can save this file on desktop with the name a click save and blank file has been created using leaf pad but there is another method using command line that i'm going to show you so let me delete it and let's open terminal of kali linux first of all let's go to the desktop so you can type cd change directory and you can type the name of the directory so first of all you can type ls here to list all the files here and the directories you can see here that desktop is available here so i can change the directory by typing cd space the directory name so you can copy it right click and you can right click and paste here and hit enter so we are here at desktop if you want to check the files on the desktop you can type ls you can see here that there is no file available on the desktop now as i already told you that you can create a blank file so you can type here touch is the command and then file name for example file name is small a so i'm here i'm creating a blank file name small a on desktop and hit enter so we have created a file on the desktop you can type here ls to list the files here and here you can see that it is showing you that a file has been created you can also check manually if you go to the desktop then you can see here that small a file has been created and which is blank right so that's how you can create a blank file using touch command inside kali linux operating system now for example if i want to add something inside that file for example if i want to write my name inside that file so how i can do that it's very simple 
you can type here cat and then this sign and then the file name right and hit enter so now you need to type whatever you want here inside terminal and it will be saved directly inside that file for example if i type my name here s u n i l right and then i can type control d or you can type right control d if you can minimize it and if you can double click on this file you can see here that my name has been typed inside this file using cat command right so this is the command cat space greater than space a after that you can type anything you want and it will be directly be saved inside that blank file right for example if you want to add append you can add it or you can append it inside a file how you can do this so you can type here cat space the sign space the file name small a and hit enter right so here you can type whatever you want and you can append that file for example if i want to type my second name which is gupta right after that control d right so you can minimize it you can double click here and here you can see that i have append that file using that command got it so that's how you can append a file using cat command you can add something inside a file using cat command right now you can also rename that file name you can type ls here and you can see the file name is small a got it if i want to rename it so to rename a file the command is mv so for example you can type here mv space the file name small a and the new name you want to provide it for example the new name is z hit enter now you can minimize it and here you can see that the file has been renamed and the, now the name of the file is z you can also type ls here to check and here you can see that small a has been converted into z again you can convert it into small a if you type mv space z space a hit enter and type list all the files by typing ls and here you can see that now z has been converted into small a so that's how you can convert or rename a file using mv command inside kali linux operating system now next is if i want to open that file inside leafpad again but i don't want to double click on that so you can directly open that file inside the terminal using a command for example if i want to open that file in a leafpad so i can type here leafpad space the file name which is small a hit enter and here you can see that i am able to open that file inside kali linux operating system got it so that's how you can open any file using leafpad now for example if i want to open the content of a file on the terminal so how i can use this i can try the command less l e w -S, s space the file name which is small a and then you can hit enter and you can see here that i am able to open the content of a file on the terminal right you can type control z and then you can come outside you can also try more command more space a hit enter you can see the content of a file on the terminal now what is the difference between more and less command more command is basically it provides you all the content once inside the terminal for example if there are 10 pages inside a file it will show you all the 10 pages at one time but in less command it will provide you information page by page first of all it will provide you first page then you will hit enter then you can go back to the second page just like that so that's why less command is more faster than the more command because less command provides you information page by page so that's why it will not take time in loading if for example if there are 100 pages so obviously more command will take time to load all the 100 pages at once inside the terminal so this is the difference between more and less command right and you can also type cat space a and using cat you can also check the content of a file inside the terminal so these are some basic commands you can use for a file right 
using touch command you can create a blank file using cat command you can add or append a file you can rename a file using mv using leafpad you can open a file and using less and more and cat command you can open the content of a file right so these all are the file commands inside kali linux in the next video we are going to learn about various directory commands thank you hello and welcome to the second video of section 3 directory commands now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points first of all we will learn about what are the various directory commands available and then i will also explain you the meaning of these commands so you need to open kali linux operating system and inside kali linux i will show you the various directory commands you can use so now guys i am here at kali linux operating system so let's talk about some very basic directory commands we can use inside kali so for that you can start the terminal of kali linux operating system so click on the terminal and open it inside kali linux so what i'm doing here basically i'm going to show you that how you can create a directory how you can remove a directory how you can change a directory how you can rename a directory so these kind of commands we are going to talk about for example if you want to check your present working directory so you can type here pwd hit enter and here you can see that we are in the root directory right it is also called parent directory for example if i go to the desktop of this system so i can type here cd right using cd we can go to the desktop so you can cd space desktop and hit enter so now you can see here that we are on the desktop here. for example if i want to make a directory inside desktop so which command should i use you can use mkdir command so you can type here mkdir space the name of the directory is small a, and hit enter so you can check on your desktop that a new directory has been created using mkdir if you open it then it is empty so using mkdi here we can create a single directory right if you want to remove a directory which command you can use rmdir so for example if i want to remove this directory i can type here rmdir space a and hit enter so it will be removed. you can check here the red directory has been removed automatically if you want to create more than one directory at a time you can also do this for example if you want to create mkdir i want to create four directory a space b space c space t and hit enter let me show you so here you can see that we got the four directories here on desktop a b c d if you want to remove it at a time you can type your rmd here space a space b space c space t and hit enter now you can again check here nothing you can also check if you type ls list the files here so you can see here the desktop is empty there is no directory available on the desktop of Kali Linux. Now, let me give you another case here. For example, if there is a directory and inside that directory there is a file, how we can remove both of them? So, for example, let me create a directory again. So, mkdir space a on the desktop, right? So, now you can see here that this is the directory which we have created. For example, let me insert a leafpad file inside this. So can open leafpad file and let me type my name inside it sunil save it on desktop with name sunil.txt right click save the file has been saved let me close it and let me drag it inside a folder or a directory you can double click here and there is a file inside it for example if i want to remove it the a from desktop so if i type for example rm space a or you can type here rmdir space a and hit enter so you can see here that it is saying that fail to remove a now this command is not working to remove the directory directory not empty so this is another case when directory is not empty then you can't use rmdir because inside directory a there is a file sunil.txt so when directory is empty then you can type rmdir but when directory is not empty this command is not going to work now which command you should use here you can try rm command here so you can type here rm space dash rv these are the basically filters these are the various options available inside rm which you can use 
rm space dash rv space the name of the directory small a right now you can hit enter now you can see here that both of the files has been removed one is directory a and inside directory sunil.txt so you can see here first of all it has removed sunil.txt which was inside a directory and then it removed a directory so that's how you can remove a directory which contains files got my point let me take another example here for example directory inside a directory again let me create a directory on desktop mkdar space a hit enter right so this is directory a and you can also create another directory inside a so now you can go inside a by typing cd space a change directory space a hit enter and here you can again type a directory mkdirb hit enter right we have created now we can come back to desktop cd space dot dot you can go back to a double click here then inside a another directory is available b directory so how you can remove two directories simultaneously one inside another it can be done for example again if i try rmdir space a and hit enter then again it will say that tree is not empty got it again if i type this one for example rm dash rv space a and hit enter then you can see here that it has removed both of them automatically right there are another command you can use right for that i need to create again that directory so you can type here mkdir space a cd space a to get inside it and then you can type here mkdir space b again you can type mkdir space b type ls b is inside a you can type cd space dot dot to come back to desktop so we have a directory on desktop and inside that you will find b directory so another option you can use for example you can also try rm space dash frv space that directory name small a right you can try rv or dash frv both are almost same and hit end so you can see here again it has removed first of all the b directory inside a and then it has removed a directory right so you can see on the desktop my desktop is empty we have successfully removed it right so you should understand that in which condition you should use which command that's totally depends on your practice so now for example if i go into another directory as i already told you that for example if i type a directory on desktop mkdir space a and i want to go inside a directory so i can type cd space a hit enter so i'm inside a right cd means change directory so using this command you can go inside a directory if you want to go back to the home directory you can type cd hit enter and you are on the home directory here you can type pwd present working directory you are inside that's how you can use the use of cd again if you want to go to the desktop so you can first of all you can type ls you will find out desktop here you can use cd change directory and i want to go inside desktop and you are inside desktop you can type ls so there is a folder or it is a directory or a folder inside desktop the name a for example if i want to rename this directory name and i want to make it c not a i can do this the command is quite simple use mv command and using mv command you can rename any directory let me show you for example i will type mv and i want to change the name of a to c right hit enter again if you type ls to list the files inside desktop and hit enter you can see here that a directory has been converted into c directory all right again you can type mv space c space a i want to again convert c to a hit enter you can type ls and you can see here that again it has renamed it means by using mv command you can rename a directory right so i have renamed a to c and then again c to a using mv command so these are the basic directory commands inside kali linux operating system that you need to understand right because this will help you in your practicals so these are all about directory commands in the next video we are going to learn about chain commands thank you hello and welcome to the third video of section 3 chain commands now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points first of all we will learn about what are the various chain commands available in linux operating system and then i will also explain you the meaning of these 
chain commands. So now you need to open Kali Linux operating system and inside Kali Linux operating system I'm going to show you various chain commands inside the terminal of Kali. So guys, uh, we show you some commands inside the terminal of Kali Linux. So first of all, open the terminal, click here and open it. So now, what is the meaning of chain commands? Chain commands are those kind of commands in which you can provide more than one command inside it, right? It is called chain of commands and they can execute simultaneously. Let me give you an example of semicolon. The use of semicolon command, for example, if you want to create a folder or directory on the desktop, so you can type here first of all cd, change directory, you can type here desktop, hit enter and then you can type mkdir space a to create a directory on the desktop with the name a hit enter if you want to create another directory then you can type mkdir space b hit enter right so with using two commands we are able to create two folders on the desktop of Kali Linux operating system let me show you the use of semicolon how you can use semicolon to run various command simultaneously for example, if you want to create A and B simultaneously, you can type mkdir space A space semicolon space mkdir space B. And then you can remove A directory. So I can type rmdir space A and then let me remove rmdir space B. So first of all, I'm creating a directory name A, then I'm creating directory name B and on the same time, I'm trying to remove the directory a and then i'm trying to remove the directory p and hit enter so basically there are already a and b directories available there so let me rename it for example let's make it c and d right and now hit enter if you can check in on the desktop then you can see here that there is no directory available on the desktop it means at the same time it has created a c directory then it has removed C directory at the same time right so if you want to use more than one commands at a time for example 100 commands at a time so you can use semicolon these are the chain of commands got it that's how it works this is the use of semicolon chain command now let me give you an example of and operator how you can use and operator inside Kali Linux to use these chain commands what is the use of and operator and operator looks like this this is AND operator. The use of AND operator is basically in AND operator both command will execute and there is OR operator. OR operator looks like this. OR operator second command will work if first command fails. So in AND operator both command will work. In OR operator second command will work if first command will fail. So let me first of all show you the AND operator. For example, if I want to create a directory E and another directory f on the desktop so i can use and operator so you can type here mkdir space a or you can type any other because a is already there so you can type e and after that and and mkdir space f got it and hit enter so if you can minimize it you can see here now there are two directories available e and f it. You can remove it by typing rmdir space e and and rmdir space f. That's how you can remove it. Got it? What if the first command fails? What happens in that condition? For example, you can again create directory, for example, g and h. Hit enter. You can type ls here to list all the files on the desktop. You can see here G and H is available on the desktop. What if I try to remove, for example, rmdir space i and end rmdir space g. You can see here that there is no directory available on the desktop with the name i, right? It means this command is incorrect, but this command is correct, rmdir, because there is g directory available on the desktop. What will happen in that condition? Hit enter. And if you can minimize it, you can see here that g directory is not removed so this command didn't work because this command was wrong 
it is saying that fail to remove i no such file or directory it means in and if both are right then it will work if one of them is not correct or the first one is not correct it will not got it this is the use of and operator again then you will type rmdir space h and rmdir space g hit enter so it will work when you type ls you won't find any directory on the desktop so and operator means both commands should work now let's talk about or operator what is the use of or operator i already told you or operator will work if first command fails and second command work so it means the first command is not correct but the second command is correct so or operator will work in this condition or operator will work right let me create a directory on the desktop for example you can type here mkdir space you can type i and then mkdir space j hit enter so we have created two folders here with the name i and j right you can also type ls to list the files i and j is available on the desktop so for example if i want to remove i can type rmdir space k or rmdir space j so basically i've done a mistake I have typed k but there is no k directory available on the desktop now i have used or operator here and now i'm also removing j directory right so if i hit enter so now you can see here that k directory was not available and you can see here that j has been removed this is the difference between and operator and or operator in previous you can see here that it is also showing you that the i directory is not available but it has not removed the g directory now in this case it is showing you the same error that k is not available but it has removed j directory this is the work of or operator if the first command fails it runs the second command in and means if the first one is not working the second will not working as well right this is the use of and and or operator got it let me show you another chain command for example pipe operator there is also a pipe operator and using pipe operator what we can do here in pipe operator the output of first command becomes the input of second command for example if i am adding something for example 2 plus 4 equal to 6 so in the second command that 6 will work got it this is the use of pipe operator simultaneously two processes can work if the first process output works as the input of the second command let me show you for example if i can type ls space dash l right i'm trying to gather information about the files and their details after that pipe operator this is pipe operator space less less means show everything on the terminal so what i'm showing here these details so first of all it will work then it will provide you the output to less and then less will provide you here so this is the pipe operator right hit enter and here you can see that you are able to gather information about only i folder because if you can check there is only one folder available on the desktop so it is only showing you that i is available there and these all the are the permissions right this is information about the process right so that's how you can use pipe operator the output of the first command will work in input of the second command got it now you can type control z to come outside of this command let me give you another example precedence operator so using precedence operator we can also merge more than one commands for example if i want to run command right using and and or operator so you can also use precedence precedence means basically you are using these kind of brackets right so for example if the first one is not working let me type some random commands for example you can type this one because this is not a command so obviously it and this one anything you can type after that you can type or and you can type mkdir y and and mkdir z got it so it means the first command is basically nothing but just some random characters so it will not work but using precedence operator precedence means basically using these brackets you can run the second command which is mkdir y and then mkdir z so it will create two directories on the desktop with name y and z 
and it will ignore the first one so now you can hit enter so you can see here that there is no command found using this but if you type ls here then you can see here that it has created two directories available on the desktop y and z has been created using mkdir command got it so that's how you can also use precedence operator on the Kali Linux terminal to use various commands at one place right because if you have no idea that this command will work or not or this will work or not or this will or this will in that case you can use precedence operator if these both will not work then it will go to the second one and it will execute inside Kali Linux operating system so these all are the chain commands inside Kali Linux in the next video we are going to learn about that how to manage services inside Kali Linux operating system thank you so much hello and welcome to the fourth video of section 3 manage services so now in this video we are going to take a look at a couple of points first of all we will learn about the various services and then I will also explain you about these services so you need to open Kali Linux operating system and then I'm going to show you how you can manage various services using terminal so now I'm here at Kali Linux operating system so first of all let's talk about the password of Kali Linux that how you can change the password of Kali Linux using terminal so the by default username and password is root and tool so TWR is the password of Kali Linux if you want to change the password of Kali Linux how you can do it it's very easy you can open the terminal of Kali Linux and inside this terminal you need to type PAWSWD right PAWSWD is the password hit enter now you can see that it is asking you to enter the new Unix password so you can type any password for example the password is root R W O T. hit enter and then R W O T. hit enter so now it is showing me that the password is unchanged I think we have done a mistake so let me type again pass WD now I can type R W O T. R W O T. and here it is so you can see here that now password updated successfully inside Kali Linux operating system so my new password is root it was T W O R and now it is R W O T. so that's how you can change your current password of Kali Linux operating system you can also back to the old one if you type PAWSWD and then you can enter that previous password you can, you can go back you can also change the full name of Kali Linux how it's very easy for example you can type here CHFN full name we are changing full name and hit enter now you can see here that changing the user information for root enter the new value or press enter for the default so you can type for example RWOT hit enter the information you want to provide about the user right anything hit enter and here it is so you have also changed the information about your user right now for example root is the user if you want to create another user how you can create it so to create a new user you can type add space user space the new name for example sunil or anything else for example user is the hit enter so do one thing just remove the space between add user now hit enter now you can see here that it is asking you the unix password so we have recently changed the unix password so my unix password is root r w o t enter again retype the new password r w o t hit enter enter the full name again you can type my name sunil room number phone number hit enter home for others is this information correct type y and hit enter you have successfully created a new user inside Kali Linux operating system so basically these all are the basic information about services now I've cleared the terminal so for example if you want to start Apache server inside Kali Linux operating system that you can do it easily you can also start Python server for example if you want to start Python server so you can type here Python dash small m simple HTTP server python space dash small m space simple http server and simple http server is case sensitive so you need to take care about capital and small letters here and then you can hit enter so here you can see that 
Python has started on port number 8000. Now you can check the IP address of Kali Linux. So click open terminal and you can type ifconfig. Your browser. So let me show you that how you can access the file and directories inside your network using this Python server. So now in the browser you can type the IP address of Kali Linux colon port number of Python 8000 and hit enter. So you can see here that you are able to access the directory of root folder of Kali Linux. It can be done in any system of that network. For example, if there is another window in any other system, so I can also access that directory using this Python server. So using Python server, you can access the directories of Kali Linux from anywhere inside your network, right? This this is the work of Python server. You can also access the Apache server. For example, to start Apache, you can type system ctl space start apache2 and hit enter. So here it is. So you have started Apache server inside Kali Linux. You can use Apache server if you want to host any application inside your Kali Linux operating system. So that's why you can stop it. You can type here system ctl stop Apache 2 hit enter and here it is. You have stopped it. So that's how these are some basic services inside Kali Linux that we are going to use inside this course and these services will be helpful inside next videos if we talk about the section summary then first of all we in this section we have learned about various file commands then directory commands then chain commands and finally we have learned how to manage the services inside Kali Linux operating system so this is all about this section in the next section we are going to learn about information gathering using Kali Linux thank you so much hello and welcome to the section 4 information gathering now in this section we are going to take a look at various points first of all we will learn about how to use net discover tool for gathering information then we will use nmap tool as well as sparta tool for scanning ports and we will also use multigo tool to gather information about various kind of systems so let's start with the first video of section 4 using net discover tool now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points First of all, what is NetDiscover and then how we can gather information using NetDiscover inside Kali Linux that we are going to cover here in this video. So what you need to do here, you need to open up Kali Linux operating system inside VMware Workstation and there I am going to show you how to use NetDiscover. So guys, I am here at Kali Linux operating system and here I am going to show you that how you can use NetDiscover tool for information gathering using Kali Linux operating system. So first of all, let me show you where it is. If you can click on applications, inside information gathering, you can find out NetDiscover right here. So you can click here. So this is NetDiscover. So this is the use of NetDiscover that how you can use this. These all are the options available here or you can say filters available here, right? So for example, first of all, dash I device, right? It will provide you information about your network device, dash I filter or dash I option. The most important options are these two for us for information gathering dash r and dash l right so what dash r provides information it provides information about range right you can provide a network range here and by using that range we can find out the machines available inside your network the live machines available inside your network so scan a given range instead of auto scan so we are not doing auto scan we are providing it a range and you can provide it like this right dash l option is also available here so dash l is for file right scan the list of ranges containing into a file for example if you have a file right you have all the ranges written there you can also provide that file directly to net discover so that it can gather information about the machines inside your network right you don't need to type inside the command just give it a file name which contains the ip addresses and it will scan the network and provide you the system informations right other options are also available right but we are only going to use these kind of options because we are performing information gathering so we are going to find out ip addresses which are live inside your network and 
information about MAC address and vendor, etc. So let me start with the auto scan command of NetDiscover. So you can click terminal, open it. So how to perform auto scan inside NetDiscover to find out the IP addresses running inside your network? Quite simple. First of all, you can type ifconfig. So you can see here that this is my adapter, right? ETS zero. It's zero, and this is my IP address, right? You can see the range 192.168.0.8. So now to perform auto scan inside NetDiscover, what you can do, you can type NetDiscover space dash i interface, and if you want to check on my interface how many systems are working, so you can use the interface name here which is ets0 right if it is wlan0 then you can type wlan0 and hit enter so here it is taking automatically the ip addresses it is scanning inside my network that how many ip addresses are running inside my network as i am using my home router so you can see here that there is hardly a system live inside my network right it will not count your kali linux ip address right because you are using your system so obviously it is live so it will only show you how many other systems are live right so there are three systems and basically one of them is router right this is my main operating system and it is not showing kali linux because you are working on them so there are three systems available inside my network inside my home network so this is basically dot one is gateway or router right this is the mac address of my router and this is the vendor so i have a d-link one more system is connected inside my network which is this looks like the phone of samsung so this is ip address which is provided by the microsoft it is my main operating system and it looks like a samsung phone connected inside my network recently right so this is the ip address of that phone this is the mac address and this is the vendor name so there are four systems available right one is my kali linux which is not listed here right one is a phone samsung this is my main operating system windows 10 and this is the router the link router is also available here so that's how you can find out that how many systems are live inside your network using auto scanning of netdiscover now next is how you can manually provide the range of ip addresses inside netdiscover so that i'm going to show you here so you can type control c to clear it and you can type clear also so to provide a range you can type dash r option here so you can type here netdiscover dash r you know where these kind of information is very important in which phase it is important in when you are performing network pen testing so in network pen testing first of all you need to find out that how many ip addresses are live so netdiscover can help you right you don't need to use any windows tool or anything any other gui tool netdiscover is a command line tool and it is providing you the best results now this is about range so you can provide a range also so for example i'm providing my network range slash 24 right and hit enter it will again provide you the same results because I have provided you. I have provided NetDiscover exactly the same kind of range. So you can see here that now there are only two machines connected. One is basically the router, and second one is my main Windows 10 operating system. There are only two hosts available inside my network. Now you can also provide IP addresses via a file, right? so you can type control c you can type clear hit enter and you can minimize it first of all let me open a leaf pad file here inside this leaf pad file let me type the range of ip address for example 192.168.0.0 slash 24 right you can save it anywhere for example inside root with the name ip.txt Click save 
and we have saved it. Now you can close it. So we have created a file and we have typed the range of my network. Now you can again open the terminal and here you can type for file otherwise you can also type net discover dash h take help so to scan from a file you can provide the option dash small l right and it will scan the list of ranges contained into a given file so you can close it and here you can type net discover dash i or dash l small l and the file which we have created inside root ip.txt right so the command looks correct hit enter and it will also take the ip address from that list right and it will provide you right here right so you can see here that now it is providing information about uh, the systems connected so as i already told you that this is my router this is my main operating system and one more i think these two are the mobile phones right one is basically apple phone and second one is a samsung phone is connected inside my network so there are five systems available inside my network right one is router one is my main operating system two are the mobile phones and one is my Kali Linux, which is not connected with this. Net Discover is not showing you right here because we are working on our system, so obviously it is live. So these five systems are live inside my network. Now I have provided you information that how you can gather information about IP addresses using auto scan, using manual scan, and also using a file to gather information about the live IP address inside your network. So this is all about information gathering using NetDiscover tool and it will help you inside network pen testing. In the next video, we are going to learn about Nmap tool. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the second video of section 4 using Nmap tool. So now in this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of points. First of all, we will learn about what is Nmap tool and how we can gather information using Nmap inside Kali Linux operating system. So again, you need to open Kali Linux inside VMware Workstation and then I'm going to show you that how you can use Nmap. So guys, I'm here at Kali Linux operating system. So we are going to take a look at Nmap tool here. So let me show you where it is. So if you click on applications, if you can select information gathering, then you can find Nmap tool is right here. There is also another tool Zenmap, which is the graphical user interface of Nmap. But if you are doing pen testing, then Nmap is a good one to gather information about because it is a command line tool. That's why. So you can click here. And this is Nmap. Right. You can read information about Nmap. These are the examples. If you want to know more about Nmap, then you can gather information using man command. Let me open a new window. And here you can type man space Nmap. Hit enter. And it will provide you all information about Nmap. So what is Nmap? Nmap is a network exploration tool or security or port scanner. So Nmap is a port scanner and using Nmap we can find out the open ports inside the target system. right? And using those open ports I can attack on that system. So in the description you can see that Nmap is an open source tool for network exploration and security auditing. Absolutely correct. Using Nmap we can find out the information about the ports running in the target system right or in the server or in any client machine so that will be helpful inside the network pen testing it was designed to rapidly scan a large network absolutely correct for example if network which contains 100 machines so it can scan all the machines and it can provide you the open ports right it also works fine single host and map uses raw ip packets to determine which hosts are available in the network. So you can read more about Nmap. For me, Nmap is a port scanner, a very good port scanner. So these are the examples here, right? For example, Nmap dash V dash capital A, and then the URL you want to provide or the IP address you want to provide. So that's how Nmap works. Now let me close it and let me open a new terminal here. First of all, 
I'm going to scan my main operating system, which is Windows 10, right? So, but I don't have any IP address. Do you have any idea that how to get IP address of the main system? We have done it in the previous video using NetDiscover. You don't need to go to the main operating system and open command prompt and type IP config and get the IP. No, you have NetDiscover. Start NetDiscover. Check the main system IP address and then put it inside Nmap. Right. That's why I was saying that NetDiscover is a pretty good tool inside network main testing. Let me show you how you can do this. So you can type here NetDiscover dash i ets0 hit enter and you will get the ip address of main operating system you just need to wait here here it is this is intel corporate it is my main operating system so this is the ip address 192.168.0.5 so that's why net discover can be used in various kind of activity so dot 5 is the ip address you can close it got the ip address of main operating system Let's find out the open ports available inside it. So if you want to gather information about open ports, there's a very simple command in Nmap. You can type here Nmap dash capital F and the IP address of target system, which is 192.168.0.5. Using this command, you can find out the open ports in a fast way or quick way. So Nmap is the tool. This is our target. Now what is dash F? Dash F is fast scan or quick scan inside Nmap. So there are various profiles of scanning inside Nmap in which one is quick scan or fast scan. Using dash capital F, you can find out information about the target system quickly or as soon as possible. Now you can hit enter and here it is. Within a second, we got the result. So it first of all, it is saying that host is up. First of all, it checks if the target system is live or not, right? After that, it only provides you the main port numbers available in the target system. For example, FTP is open inside main operating system. 135, 139, 443, 445, these all ports are open inside my main operating system. In the state, you can see that these ports are open. In the service, you can check what kind of service is running on this particular port number. For example, 21 is for FTP, file transfer protocol, right? So, and this is also the MAC address of my main operating system. I got information about if the target system is live or not. You can see here, right? I got information about ports, state and service of the target system. And I also got the MAC address of the target system. MAC address can be retrieved using NetDiscover, but this information is pretty useful. The open ports available in the target network. So that's why dash F command is pretty easy to use. Quickly, you can find out the main ports open in the, not all ports, but main ports available in the target system. Now, let me show you the by default command we use inside Nmap. So, you can type here Nmap space 192.168.0.5. Now, you will see the difference of these two commands. Hit enter and here it is. Now, check here. So, here it is showing you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ports. And here it is showing you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So according to this command, there are 5 ports open. And according to this command, there are 7 ports are open. Why? As I already told you that dash F option only provides you the main of ports open. It ignores if there are port numbers which are not useful. But Nmap space, the IP address without any filter, it provides you the complete information of the open ports available in the target network. Right. It doesn't matter if the port is useful or not. It lists you right here in the terminal. Right. For example, according to dash F, these ports are not useful. That's why it is not showing you here. But using this command, we can get the complete information about the port numbers, port state and services, as well as the MAC address. Right. So that's why these are the differences between dash capital F and without dash capital F. Got it. Now we can clear it. You can also get information about operating systems if you want. For example, you can type here nmap dash capital O space capital O means operating system 192.168.0.5. Hit enter. So basically, this command will try to provide you information about operating system. There is no guarantee, but it can try. First of all, it will try to provide information if host is live or not, then the port numbers right and 
you can see that Microsoft is running inside it, right? And here you can see that we didn't get any information about the operating system here, right? So as I already told you that we can only guess here that what kind of operating system it is using, right? So basically you can check from here, here from here that they are using Windows operating system, right? As you can see here that in my main operating system, I'm using Windows 10 operating system, right? It is also showing you right here. So there are various hints are available here. You need to analyze the result and you can get information about the target system. Let me clear it. You can also ping the target system and if you want to check that if it is live or not, you can also do it. Just ping scan. No, we are not doing port scanning. You can type here nmap-sn space the target IP address which is 192.168.0.5 hit enter and that's it the work is done it is showing you here that host is up so it means the host is live it has sent some ICMP packets to the target system and provided you information that yes the target system is live right you can also ignore that ping scan if you type nmap space dash capital P small n no ping pn means no ping 192.168.0.5 hit enter so what it does it basically ignores the ping and it directly provides the port number it is showing you here host is up which it is assuming right after that it has directly provided you the port number right so you are not able to check the internal process running so that's why i'm telling you that using pn you can skip the ping scan right it can provide you the result in a fast way so these are the port numbers state and services it has provided us so these are the some commands inside nmap otherwise there are thousands of commands in nmap but using these four to five or six commands you can gather information about the target system and it is pretty useful in port scanning process so this is all about the nmap tool in the next video i'm going to show you sparta tool inside kali linux Hello and welcome to the third video of section 4 using Sparta tool. So now in this video we are going to take a look at couple of points. First of all what is Sparta and then how we can gather information using Sparta tool inside Kali Linux operating system that we are going to learn here in this video. So again you need to open the Kali Linux operating system that I am going to show you about Sparta. So we are here at Kali Linux operating system. So let me show you first of all where you can open the Sparta. So you can click on applications. If you select information gathering, then you can find out Sparta right here. So this is Sparta. Click it and open it inside Kali Linux operating system. Here it is. So this is a graphical user interface tool, right? And using this tool, we can gather information about host, services, various kind of scripts information etc so you can minimize it and if you want to know more about sparta you can check the man command you can click and open a new terminal and here you can type man space sparta hit enter there is no manual entry that's fine you can open the sparta directly so this is basically sparta which is graphical user interface tool inside Kali Linux operating system it can also perform brute force attack right and we are here to scan only right we are gathering information we are not performing any kind of attack so we will only focus on the scan part so how to use Sparta pretty easy this is host click here it is saying that click here to add host or scope so click here now here you can provide the complete range right for example, I can type here 192.168.0.5, a single machine which is my Windows 10 operating system and this is my main operating system. So I can type my IP address, run nmap host discovery and run stacked nmap command, fine. You can click add to scope. Now you can see here in the below part, it has started working. Here you can see, right. Now it is, you can see here that this is the progress bar where you can check the progress. Here you can see the tool we are using here and map. 
here you can see the host or the target IP address which is 192.168.0.5 or window 10 IP address this is the starting time and when it will end you will get the end time and this is the status so status is running it is scanning my windows 10 ip address and very soon it will provide you the result right so you can check other details yes you can also check the information bar you will get information right here you will get the services here you can add the host from this place right so we just need to wait here until the result come now you can see guys that we got the information about the target system here right you can see here that it is showing you the ip address and here it is showing you the window icon right so it means that it is provided this information that the target system is using windows operating system right you can check services here so ftp is running here on port number 21 right and using filezilla it has provided us information that using filezilla the target system is using 21 port number that's true it is using https vmware workstation microsoft 7 to 10 ds right so using this information we can guess that the target system is using windows machine microsoft rpc net bios information this is the port number and Microsoft Windows NetBIOS SSN. This is the portal. So it is provided us information about the open ports, services, and various protocols running, as well as the state, which is open or closed, right? You can also see the complete information here, right? 21, 135, 137, 139, 443, and 445 ports are open inside target system. This is the information. This is the MAC address of the target machine you can get it inside the information part you can get information about nikto nikto is a analysis tool so it can also provide you information and it has not taken any screenshot it is providing information about brute force but we are not interested in brute force or any password attack here we are just here to gather information and this is ftp default so you can check it it is also attacking on ftp but we are not interested in attacking purpose here information gathering means simply gather information do not think about any attack process we will do it later but in information gathering part only gathering information right one thing at a time so you can also check in the below part that what they are doing basically they are gathering information about screenshot nikto and map the ftp running in the target system obviously and map to gather information about the port numbers and these are the port numbers 445 which is smb and maps so these are finished some are running you can see this one is running this one is running but you just need to wait here right so that's how you can gather information about the target system using sparta tool right so sparta can provide you more information than any other tool at one place other command line tools can provide you information according to the command but sparta will run all the command simultaneously and provide you the right information at one place at one window right so that's why this is the benefit of any graphical user interface but in generally in pen testing we always prefer command line tool over graphical user interface tool right so there are always some gain and loss inside command line tool as well as graphical user interface tool it's up to you which tool you want to use you want to use nmap or sparta totally depends on you right so this is how you can gather information about target system using sparta in the next video i'm going to show you that how you can gather information about various systems using multigo tool inside kali linux operating system thank you so much for your time Welcome to the fourth video of section 4 using Maltego tool. Now in this video we are going to take a look at a couple of points. We will learn about what is Maltego tool and how we can gather information using Maltego inside Kali Linux operating system. So again you need to open Kali Linux operating system and there I am going to show you that how you can use Maltego. So guys I am here at Kali Linux operating system. So first of all let me show you where is Maltego. 
so if you can click on applications if you can select information gathering then you can find Maltego right here so before I start Maltego we need to register inside Maltego we need to create our username and password so that we can log in inside Maltego so to log in inside Maltego you can open first of all the browser of Kali Linux and go to the official website of Maltego where we need to create our account and then we will be able to log in inside Maltego this is just to show you that how you can do it I already have logged in inside it so this is Google on Google you can type register Maltego and hit enter so this is the official website petrolwa.com click here and you can open this website so here it is community registration so basically here you can create a Maltego community edition account welcome to Maltego community edition here you will be able to register an account that you can use with latest community edition with Maltego so you can create an account here right so now here you need to provide your first name last name email address and the password you want to set there and the password confirmation click I am not a robot and register inside Maltego right so these email address and password you need to provide inside Maltego when you will open up inside Kali Linux so let me type my first name you can type any name doesn't matter then you need to provide your last name here you need to provide the email address so let me try my email address here right after that you need to set any password so let me set the password here and then you need to confirm right so I have provided my first name last name email ID password and confirm password right now you can click I'm not a robot here you need to simply provide so we are done here right you just need to click register and you can register inside Maltego so click register here and we have successfully registered inside Maltego right so now what we can do here basically now we can go inside Maltego you can log in and you can run it right so I have already logged in this is just for you to show that how you can log in inside Maltego so now you can close it now let me start Maltego inside Kali Linux so click applications select information gathering and you will find Maltego right here click here and open it so as I am already logged in right so first of all when you will open it it will provide you the three options right and after that it will ask you which one you should use so you can try on the free version click on run free then it will ask you to log in and password type that login and password click login and you will log in inside Maltego like this I already am right so this is Maltego version right now these all are the options available here Maltego is not a small tool there are various kind of options available inside it which can be used to gather information about the target system right so you can first of all click here right and it will open up the options available inside Maltego here it is so these are the options available you can see this is palette and here you can get information about different different kind of systems for example this is allies and allies for a person so you can get information about the person this is for also a person this is for a website right if you can come down then this is also for personal document email address phone numbers phrase devices banner website locations if you have GPS coordinate you can provide it and it will provide you the exact location right so these all our options are available here it will provide you information in a hierarchy based structure or a tree based structure let me give you an example here for example if you can come down let me take a website you can drag and drop it right here right so this is a website I want to get information about this website right like www.petterwa.com so how we can get information about it it's pretty simple you can right click here and you can click on each and every options here for example I can click here you can click on each and every option 
then I will show you how it looks like. at the end okay I'm done so now you will see that how it looks like here it is so it looks like this right this is the website right and these all are the information it got from internet not anywhere from internet from registrar so you can see here that these are the basic information about this website for example support at the rate .com. so it is providing you the email address of that website right it is basically connected with other websites like malformity labs.com zetalytics.com cisco.com it is also connected with cisco.com and then it can provide you information about maltego.blogspot.com docs.petreva.com it is also providing you subdomain information so if you can come down then you can see that where the information is available so this website information is available on facebook youtube twitter etc right blackhat.com website so these all information can be captured at one place right so i don't need to visit internet again and again to get information about a website i will come back to meltego i will drag and drop any record from here to here right then I will just right click here, click on all these options, and it will create a hierarchy. It will find everything from internet and will provide me right here. So that's how actually Maltego works. You can try other options as well. You can also try with any location, right? For example, GPS coordinate. For example, this one, you can right click here. You can click on to circular area. You can click other options as well. It. so for example if you want to get information about a coordinate so come if you have maltego then you can type the coordinate here you can also edit it if you want right click here click on every option and it will provide you information like this so it was our previous hierarchy right and this is our current one so you can see here that this is in maclean fairfax county virginia usa so this is a coordinate from usa right and this is you can get the address also original headquarters building civil lane mclean fairfax county virginia code and the country usa right so that's pretty basic but it is going to provide you information at one place i don't need to visit internet again and again malware can do your job easily right and these are a few options there are various options available here get information about an organization you can also drag and drop the organization here right for example you can also edit it to for example microsoft right you can right click here you can get information basically you need to add some options also that i will tell you that how you can add it right let me delete this one you can also try on a person right you can change the name of that person and then you can simply right click get information about that person right here in the maltego that's pretty easy to gather information there are other options also available right you can also basically use any other graph for example i'm using this one i can also try this one you can also try this one right so that's it you can change it right and the options are also available you can also save it if you want to save this graph you can click save file you can save it anywhere inside your operating system one more thing let me tell you that for example if you click on windows and you can then click on home right so after clicking home you will get these options available here at home now basically 